I first got to ASU, one of the first things I, I volunteered to do was to teach a large introductory chemistry class, you know, 150, 200 students. And, um, and I enjoyed it. I did pretty well at it. I got a teaching award for it. But I felt this is not a very good way to teach introductory science, and especially, especially to, to non-science majors, mm -hmm. for whom this may be you know, the, last, the last contact point they have with formal science education. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's, it's, um, it's not a very good way to do this because the lecture mode is inherently passive, right? It's inherently communicating the notion that uh, the teacher is the expert mm -hmm. and, and the student is supposed to somehow receive the wisdom from the yes. expert, which is not what science is, right? So science is really about problem solving. It's about learning how to get to answers. Um, and the lecture mode just, it, you're continually fighting against that. Mm -hmm. And there are, there are creative ways to try to do that. Um, and you can have laboratory courses that try to do that. But again, when you have 150, 200 students, your laboratory course, it's very hard to, it's very hard to break that down into small groups and get to the point where students are really doing true inquiry guided stuff. So it's, what I'm hearing from you is this is almost a challenge of active problem-based learning for science. Right. But then the challenge of how do you do that at scale of 150 students? Right. And so the combination is what's led you to this design. Right, well, well what led me initially to it was, was thinking that, okay, so there's gotta be a better way to do this. Um, and then, you know, not earth shattering to look at, you know, kids playing with video games and seeing, well, yeah. no problem with attention span there, very active, very dynamic, lots of problem solving. Why, why aren't we somehow using this kind of technology somehow in our teaching in a way that really works?